The American healthcare system is facing a lot of challenges. We're trying to bring our life expectancy up to be comparable with other countries. We're trying to manage the rising levels of chronic diseases that we have to face. Fortunately, there are a lot of innovations coming up out there. Patient-centered care, medical homes, telehealth, integrative medicine, health coaching, and the whole health approach is one of the most innovative approaches that's out there for new models of care. The challenge becomes though, when we're trying to incorporate this approach, how do we make the rubber hit the road? That is, how do we make it practical so that you can take it into your clinic? Clinicians tend to love the idea of the whole health approach, but they get a little nervous when they start to think about the practicalities. How much time is this gonna take me? How well will my patients cooperate with what I recommend? Will I be able to actually do this or will this just mean more metrics for me to complete during any visit so that my to-do list is even longer? The idea here is to give you tips and ideas to save you time, allow you to maintain your emotional reserves, and also keep you from losing your sanity. The whole health approach can pretty much be used in any clinical setting. For today, we're going to use it in an outpatient clinic that has a patient-aligned care team, or PACT. This is James. James is a 62-year-old Vietnam veteran who's been in the VA system for years. He has several health issues, including cholesterol problems, high blood pressure, insulin resistance to the point where he's on his way toward type 2 diabetes, PTSD, depression, chronic knee pain from arthritis, IBS with chronic abdominal bloating, and insomnia. Now it would be entirely possible to build the entire visit around this problem list. We can talk about each problem independently and then talk about meds or other interventions that we could use to help out. This is known as the find it, fix it model and it's very common in healthcare today. Figure out what the problem is, put in a fix. But what happens if we look at it in another way? Another model that we can use is the whole health planning model, which is built around four different steps. The first step in the whole health process is the whole health assessment. We wanna get as much information as we can so that we can individualize the plan. The first question is, what do you wanna accomplish for your visit today? And why is that important to you? The second question is, what do you want and need your health for? What do you want to be able to do with your health? And the third is, what really matters to you in your life? Step two is about establishing shared goals. That is, where do the clinician's and patient's goals overlap? Step three is beginning to write the personal health plan. We'll talk about that more in a moment. And step four is skill building and support. That is, what does the veteran need to be able to do and who does he or she need to work with in order to optimize their health care? Let's go talk to James. Hey, James. How are you doing today? All right. How are you? I'm doing well. It's good to see you. And thanks for filling out the personal health inventory. It really helps me out in terms of getting to know you even better. You know, I've seen you for a while, but this kind of covered things in new ways. There were a number of things that really stood out for me as you were talking about things in your health inventory. One that came out is, I know you love to garden, but I had no idea how much being outside had a lot of meaning for you in general. And I think that that associates beautifully with the spirit and soul side of the circle here. Yeah. The other thing that this reminded me about was I know you lost your wife a few years back. And I know that family really matters to you a lot, too. And that was another thing that really stands out looking at this. Uh, that would tie in nicely, you know, if we look at this model with the family and friends and coworkers piece. In addition, you mentioned you like photography and that you're an amateur photographer. And that certainly ties into the personal development piece. And I really appreciated, too, that you brought in the food and drink, talking about wanting to keep your blood sugars in a good place. I, I absolutely agree. And last but not least, also helpful with that is working your body and seeing that you're thinking about exercise and how you might be able to do more so that you can go back out hiking like you love to do. So one of the things that would really help me out would be to know how you would answer the question of what do you want your health for? What, what really matters to you? Hmm. Well, no one's ever asked me that. Well, family and faith come up first. I am really close to my daughter's kids, and since my daughter lost her husband, I have tried to help raise them. My granddaughter's getting married next year, and I want to be able to walk her down the aisle. Excellent. That's really something important for us to keep in mind as we're figuring out your plan today. I've taken to asking my patients this question, and sometimes the answers are amazing. You've probably heard the story about the woman who insisted that her health goal was to climb Mount Kilimanjaro, and she framed all of her visits with her doctor according to that goal. One of my favorite stories with this was a woman, when I asked her, what do you want your health for? She said, well, I view life as a playground, and I want to be as equipped as possible to be able to play to my fullest. That's powerful stuff. And this brings us to a powerful point. Always find out 
from the beginning what their health mission is. The more you know what's important to a person, the more you're going to be able to personalize their care. The next step in the process is to identify shared goals. If we have the clinician's goals and the patient's goals, we're looking for that point where they intersect. It's important to remember that you're working with the patient every time you write a health plan and they're collaborating with you. So when we think about your goal of being able to walk your granddaughter down the aisle, what needs to happen to help you reach that goal? Well, I'm worried about my heart and making it to the wedding. So sure, exercise and eating healthier should help. Yeah. yeah. So what I'm hearing is really the, the food and drink and the working the body on the circle here. And I think that's great. You know, from my perspective, doing everything we can to improve your heart risk is really important as well. And I would love to make sure that that's something that we're keeping in mind as we work toward that goal. Other people might have other goals. They may focus on different parts of the circle of health. Somebody may find that what they want to do is reduce their stress levels in a focused way. Others may find that what they need to do is build relationships with someone in their lives. The third step in the process is to begin writing the personal health plan. This is where we start going into details. Now, an important point to remember is that health plans come in all shapes and sizes. A plan may be as simple as one point or two if you're worried that a patient might become overwhelmed by what you're saying, or it may be very elaborate. Some patients like a lot of detail and are willing to follow it to the letter. So James, it sounds like we're about a year out from your granddaughter's wedding. So what I want to know is when you think about working the body and food and drink, what does it look like for you when you're preparing for meeting your goal? I would really like details. I know some people are great at one small step at a time, but I think I'd do a lot better if I had a pretty detailed plan on how to eat. I still think like an engineer even though I am retired. Sometimes I wish I had someone who would just cook healthy meals for me. And for exercise, it would be great if I could have a, a routine I could follow. Responses to the question, how can I help you, vary greatly. Some patients may simply want one suggestion, such as cutting out sugary drinks in order to improve their nutrition. When we're thinking about how to best serve someone, we need to work from the bottom of the pyramid first. That is, we need to think about, for example, whether they have food or shelter before we start thinking about all of their relationships or whether they're finding themselves to be self-effective in their lives. One of the great things about all this is that when you're helping me write this plan together, it's much more likely that you're going to want to follow through with it. You know, something else that occurs to me that's really important as we're figuring this out is we want to make sure we're not just focusing on what you need to do, but also on what you're already doing well. Uh, it, it's really striking to me, talking about your family, how important that is for you. And it really seems like they're your anchor that's going to guide you as you do anything with your health goals. They'll sort of be in the back of your mind. And I think that's really going to be important as we move forward. After we've done the first three steps of whole health assessment, shared goal setting, outlining the initial parts of the health plan, the next step is to do skill building and support. Now this brings up another important point, which is to make sure that you have a lot of different resources at your disposal. It can really help to more, make a more effective personal health plan if you can do that with different handouts, with different people you can refer to and so on. I find it really helpful to think about the circle and work from the inside out. That is, thinking about what they can do for themselves with your assistance. You may even want to have some skills you can teach them in a brief period during an office visit, or things your team members can teach. In addition, you want to be able to know what's going on in your local VA facilities. What, for example, are the programs that the recreational therapists or the chaplains offering? Finally, you want to know what exists beyond the VA as well. What, what exists in the community or outside the VA that people can make use of. I really appreciate the fact that the circle of health is encompassed within the circle of community. James, there's an excellent dietitian on our staff and I'm thinking she might be a good fit for you. She's really good with helping people eat to lower the inflammation in their bodies and she's also really masterful with working with heart disease risk and lowering that too. Is she going to make me be a vegetarian or just eat that quinoa stuff? <laughs> no, not at all. She'd actually uh, encourage you to uh, do things according to what you like and what your preferences are. Yes to the referral, uh -huh. not to the quinoa. I tried that stuff once and it just wasn't my thing. Fair enough. When medical students, residents, and fellows start writing health plans, they feel pretty overwhelmed. They want to put every single thing that they can think of into the plan. With time though, and with experience, they start to realize that they're able to tailor it to the individual, that they don't have to have something that's totally elaborate. I've seen patients who love to have a five-page health plan and follow it to the letter, but I've also seen folks who really do only want one or two particular things. 
Remember again, you don't write the plan alone. You've got an entire team to help you. And most important, remember that you can collaborate with your patient. Exactly. And this leads us to another tip. Health plans are dynamic. You write them, but they continue to evolve over time. We can create the fundamental piece of it, recognizing that with follow-up and with ongoing work, they're going to shift and move, just as the life of the patient does. James, I'll go ahead and refer you to that dietitian we talked about. And I can also think of a really good PT who I think, based on what I know of your exercise preferences, will be a really good fit too. In addition, I really want you to keep working with that counselor that you've been seeing. I think it's so important to remember that stress is a piece of keeping your heart healthy and keeping the stress down really matters. Yep, like I've always said, I know what's going on up here has to be on target too. Absolutely, and I really appreciate that you are aware of that. If you're interested, I'd also like to pass along some handouts for you. One is on approaches to decreasing pain through non-drug approaches, and another one's the same sort of thing for blood pressure. That'd be okay? Wow. You are going to give me a lot of homework. I'm willing to look at it as long as it's practical. Absolutely. And last but not least, there's the issue of follow-up. Follow-up is central to any health plan. It's really important to make sure that we have a plan in place for James because otherwise his enthusiasm or attention to his plan may wane. I've had a lot of experiences with patients where follow-up was what really mattered. When you're working with chronic illnesses and you're trying different approaches, sometimes you need to do a little trial and error before you find what works for them. So we'll have someone from the clinic call you back in about two weeks to see how things are going. And of course, you know you can call anytime with questions. And then I'd like to see you back in about two months if that sounds okay to check up on you. Works for me. Excellent. And there you have it. After this visit, I'm feeling very invested in being able to have James walk his granddaughter down the aisle. It's in James' hands now to see how far he wants to go with pursuing his plan, but we're certainly going to do everything we can from our end to support him along the way. So I would encourage you to use this process that we've discussed and start doing personal health planning for your patients. You'll probably find that your work becomes much more fulfilling and you'll definitely have a profound impact on their lives. Good luck.